Hey everybody and welcome to Water Talk brought to you by Water Online. My name is Angela Godwin and I am here at WEF Tech 2023 in Chicago. Joining me today, my guest is Ava Steinling Darling. She is with Carollo Engineers. Ava, thank you so much for joining me today. Well, thanks so much for yeah. having me, Angela. I'm excited to talk to you a little bit about some new technology that you have uh, at Carollo. But before we do that, maybe talk a little bit about your role. What do you do at Carollo Engineers? All right, so I am the uh, Water Reuse Technical Practice Director at Carollo, which means I oversee a fantastic team of people who work on our water recycling, reuse, and potable reuse projects company-wide. I have responsibilities over business development support and also making sure that our projects uh, achieve the high quality standards that we're trying to achieve. That's great. That's yeah. great. Okay, so now let's jump into this exciting new technology that you guys have. Tell yeah. me a little bit about it. What sets it apart? What does it do? Uh, well, we're really excited right now and, and uh, about this technology we're calling, affectionately calling XBAT or XBAT. Um, it's short for Ion Exchange, there's the X, um, based advanced treatment. Uh, and the application space within reuse is really exciting, but actually what has me even more excited is that its application space spans all of our water systems. So from water, drinking water to wastewater and, and advanced treatment for reuse. Oh, wow. So um, it comes from a uh, known set of processes. Uh, suspended ion exchange is the first step. Um, and it can remove organics, uh, which is important in drinking water. It can remove anions, mm -hmm. uh, including nutrients, so nitrate, phosphate for mm -hmm. wastewater applications. And then it does all of the above, plus remove some other um, challenging constituents for advanced treatment. Okay, wow, that's exciting. Yeah. So um, tell me about sort of the process of, you know, testing the technology and vetting the technology and, and sort of how that is going to end up coming to market. Well, um, it's it's pretty exciting and it's as most technology adoption processes go, it's a step by step process. So we uh, expat is really three separate ideas squished into one. The first part is the suspended ion exchange, and that actually came to us from Europe from a, a utility called PWNT mm -hmm. uh, in the Netherlands. And they've been applying this technology on their drinking water plants for several years. Um, and we are now in the process, we just were awarded a design for a drinking water applications for organics removal in the US. And so that process in and of itself got us curious about what else we could do with that technology. Um, and so we've been looking at this idea of regenerating the resin from this process with bicarbonate instead of with chloride. And what that allows us to do is to not add salt and it uh, creates a harder water that then as a third step we have to soften. And so that sounds really complicated in the, in the sense that now we're doing three different things that are new, right? Um, but they're all very um, accessible, proven individual processes. Um, and so for the wastewater applications and then moving on into, into reuse, what that allows us to do is actually precipitate out hardness and with that precipitate out salinity. So we can actually partially desalinate or reduce salinity in the wastewater for potable reuse applications, which is kind of unprecedented without RO. Right. Um, and we can treat two different uh, constituents that are problematic for a non-RO based advanced treatment train, mm -hmm. uh, nitrate and bromide. Oh, wow. um, and those are removed. So that's a that's some of the really exciting things that this little kind of pretreatment approach can do mm -hmm. Uh, ahead of a non-RO based or carbon based advanced treatment approach. Oh, that's great. Uh, what about um, the size of a treatment plant that this would be applicable for? I mean, is there like a sweet spot for the size? That's a really good question. Uh, we haven't really explored mm -hmm. it that far yet. So the uh, design that we're going to do is 82 MGD. So okay. that's a pretty, pretty substantial facility yeah. on the drinking water yeah. side. Um, we're talking about a process that is the suspended ion exchange process is very similar in, in footprint, a little bit um, more compact than a conventional uh, surface water treatment, uh, coagulation, flocculation, mm -hmm. sedimentation kind of setup. Um, on the reuse side, we also then need the pellet softening reactor or some other softening process. So that does expand the footprint a little bit. As we think about footprint for this, combination of processes. It's really similar to what we would have with the conventional surface water treatment approach with the coagulation, flocculation, mm -hmm. sedimentation system. It's a, it's a 
uh, a fluidized contactor and a sedimentation basin uh, for the main six process. And then you still need a uh, footprint for the softening step. And so that's, that's about where, um, where we're at with the sizing. As far as what size facilities, uh, we're, you know, I, there are no limitations necessarily. And um, you asked earlier about where we were in the testing phase for mm -hmm. this three part testing we have only done bench scale so far and mm -hmm. we're doing pilot testing right now nice. last couple of weeks nice. and the uh last we're in the first couple of weeks of that pilot testing yep. and the results from that will tell us kind of a cost cost optimization for this process to understand where it will make the most sense for application and probably also give us some idea of what size um, facilities it would be best suited for. Wow, that's great. So once uh, once you get through the bench scale testing, you know, what's your sense for when this will actually kind of be ready for prime time? Well, I, I, I'm really excited for the outcome of our pilot that's just started up now mm -hmm. because that will tell us whether we still have some challenges that we need to overcome or whether yep. we're really ready to go full scale. I think the the next steps are probably uh, additional pilots at utilities uh, with different water quality so we can understand the application space a little bit more broadly. Mm -hmm. And then can, we can make some better statements about who this solution would be best for. Excellent. Well, any, any kind of innovation in this space is exciting. It sure is. We wish you all the best of luck with that going forward. Uh, if our viewers want to learn a little bit more about all the great work you're doing, is there a place where you would send them? Uh, yes, so we can, uh, we are in the process of updating our website, so hopefully by the time this is published, we can go to the website at corolo.com. Otherwise, you're also welcome to reach out to me at esd at corolo.com. Um, a simple email address, thankfully, for a complicated yes. name. Um, <laughs> and I'd be happy to answer any questions. That's fantastic. Well, Ava, thank you so much for joining us today. We love hearing about all your work. And uh, again, very best of luck to you going forward. Thank you so much for having me, appreciate it. And for all of you watching, we thank you for your time. And this has been Water Talk. My name is Angela Godwin.